Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 10.2, Customary Capacity. Please pause and write the lesson number and title in your notebook. Today's objective is to compare, contrast, and convert customary units of capacity. Please pause again to write the lesson objective in your notebook. All right, fifth graders, today we're talking about capacity. Capacity is the word for how much a container can hold. Usually we're talking about liquid volume. So we talk about fluid ounces or cups or pints or quarts when we use customary capacity. There is in your agenda a conversion table that might be helpful for this lesson. It is also available for you on the back side of this page. Knowing that, let's unlock the problem. Mara has a can of paint with three cups of purple paint in it. She also has a bucket with a capacity of 26 fluid ounces. Will the bucket hold all of the paint that Mara has? So let's first off, what capacity does Mara need to convert? Well, we know that she has cups, but then it holds fluid ounces. So we need to convert cups to fluid ounces. Okay, after Mara converts the units, what does she need to do next? Well, we need to decide, it says, will the bucket hold all of her paint? So we need to decide if the bucket will hold the Paint. All right, so looking at our conversion chart, it looks like one cup equals eight fluid ounces. So if one cup equals eight fluid ounces, then we are going to go from something larger to something smaller. Now in yesterday's lesson, we learned that if we go from something small to something large, we divide. In today's lesson, we're going to do the opposite. If we go from something large to something small, we multiply. And I would suggest you draw that diagram in your notebook. So it says we're going to take eight small things and we're going to multiply them. Or sorry, three small things, each containing eight, and we're going to multiply them. So eight times three is 24. So the total cups multiplied by how much is in each cup, which is eight, equals 24. Now let's do our step of comparing. It says that her bucket will hold 26 fluid ounces and she only has 24 fluid ounces. So her bucket is larger than the amount of paint she has. So that means that her bucket will hold the paint. So since 24 ounces is less then the 26 ounces that her bucket will hold. That means that her bucket will hold all of the paint with no extras left over. Great job so far, fifth graders. Let's continue on to the example. In the example, Coral made 32 pints of fruit punch for a party. She needs to transport the punch in one gallon containers. How many containers does coral need? It says, to convert something smaller into something larger, we need to divide. So remember, we are going from something smaller to something larger, so we're going to divide. It says that when we do this, we may need to convert more than once, and this is a tricky step. So it says we're going to go from pints, and pints are right here, and we need to end in gallons, and gallons are down here. And so you can see we're not just going from one to the next. We have to go from pints to quarts, and then quarts to gallons. So let's do step one. It says, write an equation to convert your pints to quarts. So it says one pint, well two pints, is one quart. So if I have 32 pints, I'm going to divide, because I'm getting something larger, by 
2, and I got that 2 right here. So 32 divided by 2 equals 16 quarts. But I don't want to know how many quarts, I want to know gallon, so I'm going to keep going. The total number of quarts, 16, still going to divide because we're still getting smaller. And now look, I'm going to divide by 4 this time because there are 4 quarts in a gallon. So 4 equals 4. So that means that coral needs 4 1-gallon containers to transport all of the punch. Great job, 5th graders. All right, today's lesson activity is the share and show section right underneath the example. You're going to help me fill it in and answer some questions on your own to be prepared to show at the teacher table. It says, use the picture to complete the statements and convert three quarts to pints. So looking at the chart above, I know that one quart equals two pints. And you can see that in the picture here. This is a quart and one quart equals two pints. So that means that one quart, one of these, is larger than one pint. But if I had three quarts, then if I'm going from something larger to something smaller, then I'm going to multiply. So something larger to something smaller. If I have three quarts, I would multiply it by how many pints are in each quart, which would give me how many pints. You fill in the blank and then be prepared to share at the teacher table. Great job, fifth graders.